The Doctor Who, our Hambra podcast. Real Doctor Who fans with real Doctor Who opinions. Hello and welcome to the Doctor Who Alhambra podcast, episode 278. Uh, I'm Humphrey and across the pond we have... Brett, hello. And back across the pond uh, in a nicer climate currently, probably, because it's probably still not winter where you are, because it's still currently winter here, is... Hello, it's Liam. I doubt it. We've had some miserable weather again. (laughs) So, uh... Ah... Ugh, yeah. yeah I, I was telling uh, Humphrey beforehand that we can't, I constantly get told because, you know, it, it has snowed so much that the devices that they have on the mountains up here to measure how much snow it has snowed <laughs> is currently frozen. under snow. No, <laughs> it is under the snow. So oh, that's wow. how much it has snowed. So, uh, we, isn't we, that for the, the irony? past week or so, <laughs> exactly. For the past week or so, we've been kind of told. You know, hey, remember, you're in a flood zone, and if, you know, it gets uh, too hot too fast, uh, better start if sandbagging. If you hear rumblings, <laughs> run like buggery. <laughs> All right. Well, in this podcast, we're going to be doing the uh, March, yeah, March reviews of for 2023, which is weird because it's April, almost the end of April, and uh, yeah, th- there's... Uh, has Big Finish given us any news? I've kind of been out on the news lately. I've just kind of been, not you know, really. Luckily, thank God, because you know, bank balance is going. Oh, thank God! But um, <laughs> <clears throat> no, no, no real news. More news actually from the new series, which is interesting. I've been sending articles over. There, I, I guess as you've seen. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, some sad news about. Murray Melvin, who plays obviously Billis Manger in Torchwood, he died, I think it was last week. Um, he was 90, so, you know, not a bad age, but still some, you know, some sad news. Uh, as, yeah, it looks like the Torchwood Among Us box set 2 will be his final appearance, which is a little bittersweet. Um, Unless they've recorded stuff and in the can that we've that we've not heard about, but I, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, I I'm just checking to see if they've done any, if he was in the third Torchwood Among Us. But currently, according to the production notes, we don't have a cast or crew. All we have is you know director Scott Hancock, executive producer, mm. uh, you know producer. So, you know, there's really not that much uh, information. There's not even cover art for the Torchwood Among Us Part 3 that is coming out this July of 2023. So, uh, yeah, it could be. Maybe they do have, like, you know, a monthly adventure uh, in the can for later. But, uh, yeah, Uh, sad news. Mm -hmm. I've never listened to one. I think think you and... uh, Legion were kind of yeah. talking to me. I, I got, came and got, got close to picking up and listening the train one, but I don't think I ever pulled the trigger on that. That one. was good. Or oh, and the other good one. Well, actually, all of his stuff he's in is good. Uh, the train one, the mine one, and Dead Plates was very good. Hmm. That was the last monthly w- with him in. I mean, and in- interesting. We still don't know really who or what he is which is quite interesting. We just know that he's basically kind of, well, immortal and he's kind of a grey character. We don't really know his motives. He's, you know, quite mysterious. Mm -hmm. But I like that, though, like having a bit of mystery about that, you know. So it's, Mm -hmm. you know, interesting to see that. I suppose before we get on to the Big Finish reviews, I suppose in other news, I guess because it's, I suppose, perhaps directly linked, uh, I don't know about you, Brett, but I've not done too many releases of March just because not a lot of stuff has really been piquing my interest from Big Finish at the minute. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to the Rani Takes on the World box set because me and Humphrey have been re-watching the Sarah, well, or watching the Sarah Jane Adventures and we're on series four. And if you want really good Doctor Who stories, i Say the Sarah Jane stuff is is brilliant for that. Even the weaker stories, in my opinion, have, have 
have been good, you know, fun and well written. Uh, whether it's just because of the issues that we've had with the current era under, under Chibnall and Jody, but it's just been really nice to go back and go, oh yeah, Doctor Who is actually good. There's some good stories here and some good characters and concepts that actually work and get followed through on. And you kind of almost forget how good writing can be. So I'm I am really looking forward to the continuation of the, yeah, the Rani stuff. Um and I think it's quite interesting that they've got Luke back in uh, series two of, of, of that, which is nice. So I'd like to think maybe along the line that they, they might get maybe Bria back or even Sky. I mean, I've not listened to it, so I don't know if they mentioned her. I mean, I know she's not in it, but I like the fact that, um, you know, they, they, cause I looked at the interviews, they've said that this isn't going to be the, the Sarah Jane adventures on audio cause they didn't think it would be appropriate. But however, I like the fact that they're still dealing with the characters around Sarah Jane. And it's nice to have them like as adults now, you know, kind of our age, thirties mm. and, and, you know, a bit more grown up. So, yeah. uh, I, I am actually really looking forward to that. No. And you, you bring up a good point regarding like the whole writing and stuff like that, because I have actually like stopped watching lots of modern TV because like, you know, I, I feel as though I'm inundated and maybe I'm also in a, kind of an echo chamber also, even though I try to, you know, watch things that are kind of out of my echo chamber, just kind of, you know, get like a rational view or whatever. But mm. I feel as even though maybe the people that I feel as though are outside of my echo chamber still have the same complaints that I do because it's constantly like, you know, this is bad writing. This is bad writing. This is bad casting. This is, you know, buck ticking casting and stuff like that. And then uh, mm. you have like this current series of Star Trek Picard which has been phenomenal. In fact, my biggest complaint about it was the last episode, I think probably could have been like turned into two episodes and kind of like stretched out a tad bit and given mm. time to breathe and whatnot, but it's still good. And then I've been going back, watching some Voyager that was, you know, I, I was doing some like, mm. you know, nerding out and doing this, watching some Voyager, watching some uh, Next Generation because, you know, I've only ha watched probably about a handful of uh or two handfuls of next generation episodes so yeah. i've been watching that and it's just like these are good then you have the you know the the latest power rangers movie that came out on netflix which is kind of like just celebrating the classic series you know mm -hmm. the series that existed when i was a kid you know I'm... and is hokey as hokey as it was at, at the time it's still a it the the writing good was TV. actually quite yeah. Good. Yeah. I mean, I'm going back through and re-watching Mighty Morphin at the minute because I'm like, I want to go because what I want to do is I want to watch all the shows that link into Mighty Morphin, you know, so mm -hmm. Zeo, Turbo, up to, I think, is it is it Lost Galaxy? And that's when it diverges. Yes. Um, so I'm, what I'm going to do is watch all of up to Lost Galaxy, all the, you know, the, the most important episodes that aren't just filler. And then I'm going to go watch the... Um, 30th anniversary and i had i was talking to legion about this yesterday i had no idea that jason david frank uh franks died last year i had no clue yeah. i must have missed that it, uh, i was like yeah he, i think he died in yeah. september yeah 49 <clears throat> i had no idea he, he was 50 yeah. um no he's 49 thereabouts oh god well yeah, yeah. and um because people were apparently were complaining to uh amy joe john johnson 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 yeah. uh-huh um, and they were complaining and she's like, oh, well, why weren't you in the special? She's like, one, I, I wasn't asked Two, I've given up acting and three, I was helping a friend through, you know, an emotional breakdown. I, uh, you know, Jason David Franks. Actually, he, he was still alive lives. when they record, they, he was still alive when they recorded the, uh, mm. 30th anniversary. Oh, yeah, yeah, but what I mean is, is she wasn't she wasn't on the the show because yeah. of those reasons. Um, well, and then 
I, and I will just tell you, the, the beautiful thing about the reunion is mm. the tribute that they pay to Trini. I, yeah, I thought that that I've was that. probably that was the nice. best thing that they did. You know, it was sad and it was emotional, but it was also written quite well. And again, mm. it's one of those things where, and it was funny, I was saw something pop up on uh, YouTube and, you know, Hollywood is talking about their, the writers striking again. It's just like, you know what? Uh, oh you're God, you're currently this, not doing a... Was it 2004 yeah. again? No, is it 2004? Yeah. When, uh, when was the writer's strike? I think it was six. I think it was six. six. Uh, anyway, yeah. I, I feel as though I'm like, you're shooting yourselves in the foot because I don't think you're really doing producing that good of work right now. So, yeah. Strike no. away. We'll just watch some of the stuff that came out like in the 70s, 80s, and 90s or whatever. And, you know, great TV. And yeah, mm-hmm. you, you can just sit on your picket line. Nobody will miss you. Like the only people no. that will miss you is uh, the Hollywood, you know, actors because they'll be kind of temporarily unemployed because of your lack of work. But like, and let's face I, it, I think the, qual- the Hollywood actors, yeah. I'm sure they can get work <laughs> elsewhere anyway. You know? Exactly. They can do voiceovers for, you know, car commercials. I don't know. I don't care. Mm. But, uh, yeah. But, and So, yeah. I, so, I, I am going through Power Rangers, and I'm, I'm looking forward to watching the, the, the reunion. I'd like to think that, that, that they might now continue that and spin that off into another series. I don't think that would be nice if they could. Um, well, the interesting thing is, is somebody brought that up on YouTube, and they're like, well, you know, with Trini's daughter that they introduced in the ser- in mm. the anniversary they're like they set it up too perfectly to not spin out yeah and so so this this is my question right so uh have they basically done it so basically the rain the mighty morphin rangers that have been around for the past 30 years still doing stuff yeah it's that's interesting it's so weird because i remember when you know you had uh, Tommy and, or is it Tommy? No, Jason and um, who's the other guy? Anyway, Zach? the Black Ranger. Zach, Zach. yeah. Mm-hmm. They, they you know, t- turned over their coin and they shared the power with somebody and then they walked into the sunset and left. And they walked in, yeah. The, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the, Adam, this Adam base- and Rocky, to be precise. Yeah, yeah. And, but then it's almost like, it that happened, but it also at least in the thirtieth didn't happen because all rangers currently exist now, and so huh. I and they even have the the classic dragon zords that you know before it was because this is the you know Tommy or you know or, yeah Tommy is still considered the Green Ranger right now. He's not the. He's not the White Ranger. He is, yeah, he's Uh, he's the Green Ranger. So it's it's really quite interesting. But it's just like you know what? This was the time period that I actually liked the most. So Mm, yeah, mm, mm. I'm glad that they did that. So um, tell me, have they have they kept the original theme tune? Yeah, in fact, what was they they kind of jazz it up just a tad bit. But one of my favorite parts of the entire thing thought brought chills down my spine is, you know, you kind of pick up on a hillside with uh, Billy taking on some putties and then suddenly the rest Uh of the rangers pop up and then there is the prototypical explosion as they are running towards a group of putties and then the theme Mm -hmm. song starts and it's just like, oh, Oh, chills down my spine. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's cool. I must admit, like... As you say, it's hokey and cheesy as hell, but I loved Mighty Morphin for the for the songs. They were so bad, they were good, you know. <laughs> you know. Well, yeah. It, well, uh, not only that, but it was still good. It was good writing for kids too. I mean, like, what was it? Mm. One of the 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 things that Billy brings up is like, you know, when Trini saved came over her fear of heights to help save them. And it's like as hokey as it is, like there were like you know, kind of like messages and stuff, obstacles and stuff like that, that they, the characters had to get over. So yeah, yeah, it it was, it it was a good celebration and, and yeah, I I don't feel as though we have a good or enough good writing nowadays Mm. to, Mm. you know, 
and, and maybe it's just because, you know, I'm an old curmudgeon that grew up in the, the 90s and stuff like that. But it's just mm. like, no, nah, I, I think the 90s were actually like better like than yeah. modern time. Yeah, you know, not a bad decade, you know, or even like early 2000s, you know, you had some really interesting sci-fi, you know, with like stuff like Stargate, Farscape, Babylon 5, you know, you had some, you know, DS9, Enterprise even, you know, you had some really interesting sci-fi stuff going on. I I heard Um, that Amazon is doing their uh, Stargate series coming up soon. Yeah, they're doing a reboot. I don't know. We'll see. (laughs) I like Stargate. Stargate was a good show. I, you know, it'd be good to go back through it, actually. Uh, Because, again, it went to some really dark places, which Mm -hmm. sci-fi up until that point wasn't really doing it was sort of ds9 stargate sg1 you know and babylon 5 and farscape that went to started to go into arc you know arc heavy plots and darker territory rather than just the oh well this is the episode of the week thing yeah well and Um, i'm gonna you know i'm gonna say this and ask humphrey because he's been relatively in in his book corner for a little bit (laughs) <laughs> I like I I feel as though that you know these shows that we're talking about yes they went into dark places but they were still there was bright there was hope or whatever and I feel yeah. as though modern shows it's just like everything has to be gritty and dark and like yes. we'll give you an ounce of a hope every so often yeah I mean we'll take Star Trek the next generation for example you take Take an episode like Q Who, for example, the first Borg episode, which, you know, that, you know, is pretty damn dark, really. But the ending, you know, there, there is that ray of hope at the end, you know, and even, mm-hmm. you know, um, even uh, the episode where Tasha Yar dies. I mean, that's a shocker of an episode in terms of how dark it gets. But, Mm -hmm. you know, you still have the lovely words she says at her funeral. And there's always that message of hope there, even in the darkest of episodes. Um, Even the episode where Data gets kidnapped by that psychopathic maniac. You know, it's there's always that spark of something good. I mean... Mm -hmm. You know, don't don't get wrong. You know, I'm 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 big into you know dark dystopian stuff. But yeah, I get you. Like, um, you know, even like with the Warhammer stuff. Yes, it's dark. Yes, it's gritty. But the but there are the, you know, there is that element of of hope there. There is that sort of comedic side as well that it is there. Like, and that's why I I I've never been. I I couldn't get into stuff like Breaking Bad. It's too much. Oh yeah. It's too mired for me in reality. Like, I don't want to watch yeah. somebody's bloody decline into, you know, corruption due to drugs. You know what I mean? Give me give me a good period piece, you know, set in the Victorian era or whatever. Like, but, uh, yeah, uh, you know, so I've, I've never been, I could never get into stuff like Breaking Bad. Um, no, you know, I'd, I, I'd rather watch. I, I'd rather watch something like Boardwalk Empire. Okay, it's quite quite dark, but it's it's more interesting for me, I think, personally, because it's period and set mm-hmm. in yes. you know the nineteen twenties. You've got the whole thing about prohibition. Yeah, sure, it's got gangsters and stuff, but it isn't really about drugs. It's just about you know them selling alcohol and and whatever, and the characters or the people that were around at the time doing that. And just the backdrop of the First World War and the Roaring Twenties and what that meant for America. So that, for me, is way more interesting than watching stuff like The Wire or Breaking Bad because it's not in modern day. You know, it's a whole different period, whole different way of speaking. Language was different. Um, Mm -hmm. Values were different. People were different. So, yeah. Now, I, I, I've said for, at least with like my family and stuff like that for past couple of years, like whenever they say, what, what 
vacate what is your dream vacation i'm like my dream vacation nobody can give me and they're like no 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 like what is your dream vacation i'm like nobody can give me my dream vacation because it's not possible to like currently or possibly ever they're like no 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 what is your dream vacation i'm like i would like to spend a week in the 1950s i just think that would be a f- like just a simpler mm. time you're you're you know as much as i like walk away from technology and and tr- you know try to you know limit my use or this or whatever it's still there if i was in the 1950s i would have no choice but to just yeah. you know take things slower because yeah. everything yeah. was is slower Different. down because it's, of the lack yeah. of you know yeah technology mm-hmm. I mean, again, that's what yeah. I mean. You know, the 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 twenties or the early nineteen hundreds would be really interesting to do because there's no such thing. You know, there's not technology and whatever and and all that. And it would be, in, you know, it would be good just to do. I mean, that's why I love Stranger Things. You know, it's that nineteen yeah. eighties nostalgic. You know, phones are not a thing. Um, you know, kids 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 get around on bikes. You know, because that's that's that was my childhood riding around on bikes and mm. like my, you know, whenever if I didn't come home when I you know, was promised to my parents would, you know, had a Rolodex of houses to call around to to find out where yeah. I was instead of, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. call my yeah. Apple watch and be like, hey, dude, you should be home by now. Like it, it was, mm. you know, maybe it was a, maybe a little bit more paranoid filled with parents or whatever. But, you know, for me, I felt completely free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's definitely that element of, of of freedom because I mean, as a kid, you know, I, I I was going around, you know, with my sister rollerblading, you know, skateboarding, mm-hmm. you know, hitting trees, whatever. But I was still out skateboarding, blading, climbing trees. Like, what kid does that now? Or simple things, just like going to the park. Oh, they, they do you all that except you, they do that on video games. <laughs> yeah yeah but you you don't really hear about that now, do you kids have got oh you know going down to the park on you know park or going to the leisure center to go for a swim now you in know? fact what is it every so often as i talk to my students or whatever you know i'll ask them like what did you guys do over the weekend and some of the kids that like you know basically spend the entire weekend playing video games there will like, be one or two kids that will mumble under their breath like, come on, dude, just go outside and touch some grass, man. And I'm like, you, you, you'd think that that would be like, yeah, it, that makes t- so much sense. But that's not how the kids are geared this day. It's just like, oh, no. I, I'm gonna, no. I'm gonna game for 13 hours. And that's the thing. Like, if, if I don't know about you guys, but, but if, if I ever have kids, I don't want them to have iPads or Apple nope, Watches totally at least two. You know, nope, I, totally I want, agree. you know, mm-hmm. I want them to like take them outside let's go to the park or nature you know or or try and give them a learning that's geared more around nature and Mm -hmm. the outdoors because it's disappearing you know so all right well uh going back to uh days of old big finish tweeted Remembering the wonderful William Hartnell today, the, who brought the doctor to our screens and an unearthly child. What is your favorite Doctor Who moment? And I think most people just kind of uh, relegated themselves to the first Doctor. You know, they brought up, you know, Ian and Barbara. Some people said the War Machines, Web Planets, the Aztecs. You have a couple people that I, I'm very surprised with. Uh, a couple of the responses because you know the massacre, which is one of those I've never listened to. Uh, Celestial toy maker, you know, what is your, uh, I you know, as you know, we're getting ready to do some of these, you know, um, happiness patrol things. What is your favorite Doctor Who moment or first Doctor moment? As this is a celebration of him. For me, uh, I've always had a bit of a soft spot for the sensorites because it was the first, as I, I guess if we said before, it's the first story where the Doctor's like, yeah, we've been through a lot, you know, you, you know, and and he he says and comes out that they're basically his companions at that point. 
So by that point, yeah. they've gained his trust and there's not that kind of push-pull relationship that was going on within the first six stories because the, the, they kidnapped him and... Sorry, he kidnapped them and they wanted to get back. I mean, they still want to get back, but I think they're more at ease with just traveling around the universe and just seeing what the universe has to offer. What about you, Humphrey? I think my favorite uh, first Doctor story, actually, in many respects, is the Daleks. I mean, if you were to do a straight-up comparison between the Daleks and Dalek Master Plan as stories, probably the Dalek Master Plan is better. But there is something about the Daleks. It's just a really good story. And they're very mysterious in that story. And the first Doctor, you don't quite know what his game is in that story, so it's interesting. It's just a really interesting and exciting story. Yeah, I uh, somebody posted a GIF that I was like, I think even though it's not the greatest story, I know Humphrey likes it, but one of they they posted something uh, a GIF that I'm like, I think that encapsulates like the first Doctor. You know, we think about him oftentimes. You know, and often we think and remember things that are kind of a bit more negative. It's easier to remember negative things and positive things. I don't know if that's just you or mm. that's or if it's me or whatnot, but mm. uh, you know, you you know of him as like the crotchety, you know, losing temper or whatever. But somebody posted the gift of the first doctor popping out of the Dalek in the, the space museum. And like I think those are like the, the best parts of the first doctor is when like, what is it? In the Daleks' master plan, there are some really grave and dark situations, and he's giggling. And yes. like, I, I, I think that is, like, the best part about the First Doctor is he sometimes he's very stern and strict, and maybe it's because he's caring and compassionate, and that's the only way he knows how to express those things. But oftentimes in dire moments, he can laugh. And I like yeah. that. Yeah, I like that. Mm. So I guess with that, I think we met. We were talking about, or going to talk about some burnout and some writing mm. and stuff like that. Because again, March releases. Here are all the March releases for 2023. And this, and this is going to go in the order in which they're listed on Big Finish. And that is the Doctor Who Fourth Doctor Adventure Series 12, the New Frontiers, the Ice Heist, and the Attila, the Lost. Then you have the 8th of March, Strange Chemistry, the Terror of the Master, which was a special that was added to, I believe, Masterful, that came out about a year or so ago. We have UFO Breaking Point, and Avengers comic strip adaptation volume seven, the Torchwood Thirst Trap, and you then there's they have the Iris Wild Time and Friends, and then the Jerry Anderson Entertainment Special. And I I was telling the Humphrey before you got here, I only listened to like well the the fourth doctor stuff because yeah, I've, I've listened to that. I've, I've been under to... I yeah, I've listened to the fourth Doctor stuff, and I just finished the eighth of March, uh, box set. I started uh, it, but didn't finish it. Yet. One was considerably better than the other. Put it that way. Well, and 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 as I look forward to April, I'm going to look at April and May since we're currently in the month of April, and we're about a week away from May. So April brings us the fifth Doctor Adventures, conflicts of interest. Star Cops, The High Frontier 2, Robot 6, yes, that's still a thing. Torchwood, launch date, Ronnie takes on the world. And then we have Survivor's New Dawn. Like, sadly, besides the Fifth Doctor Adventures, I think I'm out on everything else, personally. I'm looking forward to the Fifth Doctor and Ronnie takes on the world. <sighs> not, not that bothered. I'm not that bothered about the Fifth Doctor, actually. Like I said, the one I'm really looking forward to is the Rani box set. I do need to go back and listen to the Star Cop stuff because that's generally pretty good. I've I waited for box set two to come out so I could, you know, do the whole of series three. 
But mm-hmm. uh, the rest, yeah. And it's sad because usually I listen to every, you know, fifth Doctor box set that comes out, but just the the plots, not just haven't grabbed me. And uh, yeah, so the, the the only one I'm really looking forward to is, as, as I said, the Rani one. And then we have May, which is going to start in about six weeks' time. We have Torchwood Among Us Part 1, which I am interested, extremely mm. interested in. We have yeah. the Doctor Who Lost Stories, Daleks, Generation, Genesis of Terror, which oh, I am God. not interested in. We have oh, The Six no. Doctor Adventures, Purity Unleashed, Space 1999 oh, Volume 3, Dark huh. Season Legacy Rising. That we have the, uh, the, one, the first Once in Future uh, story, which I'm very excited mm. to listen yes. to. Yes. We have the the War Doctor Begins Comrades in Arms, which I am signing me up for. And then the Ninth Doctor Adventures Pioneer, which again, mm. I'm completely out on. So, like, for me, over the, you know, last month, this current month, and next month, May is the best month, at least for me, for my excitement so far. Mm. Yeah, I'd yeah. agree. Yeah. I mean, I'm, enjoying, I'm inter- interested in most of, the, of those releases, which hasn't happened in a while, I must admit. I mean, Pioneers should be interesting because it continues the story with, um, like I say, the characters that were in the last box set. The partially sighted character with the, with the talking guide dog. And that story is apparently is a sequel to The Green Death. That sounds good. Which looks interesting. And, yeah. Legacy Rising sounds interesting because, again, it's sort of RTD's sort of first thing on TV. You know, they're continuing that story. Um, you know, getting back the original actors for that, as in in different roles, which well, no, sorry, as they, themselves but older. So, yeah, no, it, it does look an interesting month, but it's that hasn't happened then, in a while. I, yeah, and I, I will tell you, them doing a monthly release for Once in Future, like I'm actually that it gives me at least one thing I know I'm going to listen to and something. That I'm looking forward to. Yes. Which again yes. has not happened since the cancellation of monthly range. Maybe yep. even Fourth Doctor when they turn when it went from you know monthly releases to box sets. Which again I understand it's a little bit cheaper to do. But again, I want something to look forward to. I'm I want. I I mm. yeah. Anyway. Uh, that being said, I'm just going to look at June real quickly just to, to gauge your interest because, again, May looks intriguing for me. You have uh. the Fourth Doctor Adventure Series 12, Angels and Demons. Uh. Uh, you uh, have Torchwood uh, Among Us Part 2, which is, I'm interested in. Mm-hmm. Luther Arkwright, the next uh, what you know, the Heart of the Empire, Empire. which mm-hmm. might be good. The yeah. Lost Stories, The Ark, which, again, oh, not God. intrigued by. Nope. Seventh Doctor Adventures, so far, TBA for title and cast and crew. The only person that we know is Sylvester McCoy, which, you know, at this point in time, mm. like, we're a month away from it being released, maybe a month and a half at most from it being released, and still no, you know, art, still no cover art, still no... Character still Details. no stories, mm. yeah, so, and it's, it's almost very similar to the next release, which is the War Master Solitary Confinement, because we have J- Derek Jacoby who's in it, and then story details to follow. And the thing so, is, we like, know we know that the War Master stuff has been recorded up to box set eleven. That's like that's been definitely oh. confirmed. So why they're taking ages to? put out the plot details and the story details because they know the story because they've bloody recorded it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, and I then mean, of course, what's the, going the, on? Yeah. The last thing that they have released for the month of June is the once in future, the artist at the end of time, which again, something to look forward to. So yes. I'm, uh, I, I, uh, the o- the only thing that is like really getting me from month to month, starting in a- in May, is 
the monthly release of the once and once in future. And again, it just goes back to something simplistic, and that is the, the release thing, of the monthly only, things. The only caveat I have to that, Brett, though, is that we're going to get like seven parts of that, and then we're going to have to wait for like a year <laughs> for the for the finale. I'm like, Thir- why are we going to no, wait thir- a year for the finale for? Oh no, not a year, thirteen months, because <laughs> the last one drops in October. And then the next one is released November, November. the following yeah. year. So, yeah, 13 like why? months. <laughs> why? Doesn't make any sense. No, no. I, I, and the thing is, I kind of don't want to start it because I know if I get hooked and get into it, then I'm going to follow it from month to month and then go, oh, wait, we've got to wait 13 months for the bloody finale. And then it's, oh, hang on, I've forgotten what's happened. We're going to have to go back and do it all again. Do you, do you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, but I'm going to give you pushback. And and, and uh, this mm-hmm. is just a slight pushback because I'm, I I do agree with you. But here we are talking about the beauty of the simplistic of, you know, re- gradual release from like the TV series for this to this to this. And now you're irked that you're going to have to wait. Now you are waiting 13 months, which I totally get. But- to me, here's the beauty. Uh, here's the one positive that I'm going to put on it being released 13 months later. And that is something that we often don't do. I, I, I'm curious. I know I don't do it as often as I probably should because, you know, I, I, I buy these things. I listen to them once. And if I had them physically or whatever, I'd put it on my shelf and then walk away. And then that thing would just collect dust. Now, mm. it is not on my shelf because things are a tad bit more expensive to ship overseas. So I buy them on a uh, digital download. But, you know, after I listen to it, I delete it off the app and I basically leave it on my, you know, account to rarely ever get re-downloaded to re-listen again. So to me, I guess you could say the beauty of this is it might force me to actually revisit all of the ones that came out before, the, you know, in That's 2023, true. before they come mm. out or before they f- do the final part in 2024. So it might not be a bad thing because, again, I, I, I'm i spending like, you know, for me personally, I don't know about you guys, but for me personally, the DVDs and the Blu-rays of Doctor Who have are to me more rewatchable or maybe I they're easy for me to rewatch them. Then for me to just sit down and listen to a box set or a monthly adventure from time to time. Yeah. So that's my silver lining for it being 13 months out from, you know, part seven. Yeah. So. I mean, I, I just well, I just think why, though? Like, it's one hour long story. Why have we got to wait 13 yeah. months for that? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like I understand, I'm curious, the, you know, yeah. the point that you put across, and you know, and I get that. But like, why the thirteen month gap? It doesn't make any I, sense. I, I'm, I, I'm curious if Nick Briggs has ever talked about it in the uh, Big Finish podcast. I mean, I'll never know, and lo- <laughs> because yeah. yeah, that is, oh, not not saying that you know our podcast is perfect, but that podcast is just absolute garbage. Hmm. So it'd be interesting to see if uh, somebody that you know listens to the podcast or whatever. Uh, Humphrey, do you listen to the podcast? I haven't for years. Uh, Okay. No, I haven't for Uh, years. So I'd be kind of curious to find out if at some point in time in the podcast that they have given their rationale for why it is going to be 13 months out from that. I, I, I'd love it for them to explain it on the news page, but that would mean that they would have to update their news page a tad bit more regular than they do and mm. highlight it also. So, yeah. All right. Well, with that being said, the only other thing that we have news items wise is something that you brought up, which is the new images for the 15th doctor and Millie Gibson, uh, which I, I, I hope this entire storyline takes place in the '60s. Oh my word, I, I love these costumes. Oh, I, they, uh, 
They he are wearing? time period are perfect. He is wearing a blue striped uh, blue suit with striped uh, like thicker pinstripes, and his hair is kind of like semi afroed out. He has like kind of like prototypical like sixties sideburns, and then she has like the big sixties hair in your prototypical like female skirt suit. Like it is, mm. I am in love with these costumes and I would hope I, I, I wanting them to have multiple stories uh, wearing these, but that's besides the point. I mean, again, isn't it, isn't it nice that they're putting out images of, and uh, like, again, you know, the doctors isn't always in the same stuff and they've actually, you know, you know, they're going back, back to a bit of, you know, them fitting in kind of, you know, not just. I, I don't know what you're you talking know. about. According to Chris Chibnall, everybody likes being like not knowing stuff. It's it, <laughs> that's the, that, that's what the fans want. The fans don't want to know stuff. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. Yeah, apparently. Uh, uh, Speaking of Chibnall, did you see the article I sent about the? Uh, I did. It's, fully... it's been a while. I I, I haven't uh, perused. It. I haven't perused it lately, but I did like skim it when you first sent it. So, <laughs> oh, I just found it so ironically funny. Just the arrogance what, what was... for him to turn around to go and. Oh yeah, I fully expect Ross, uh, RTD to basically like ignore everything I've done. Yeah, because it was crap. Exactly. Yeah, he sat there, and goes, "Hmm, let's see. Let's look at the the uh, the viewing figures numbers. Let's see. You took over and they dropped. Let's see. I'm gonna take over and um, wonder what's gonna happen. Probably the exact mm. opposite. All right. Well, I guess with that." We will move on to the big finish releases for the month of March of 2023. And let's just get some of these things out of the way. I don't think if I heard everything right, you did not listen to Torchwood, the thirst trap. No. No. Okay. And then everybody is out. uh, uh, One of these days, I think we're going to have to sit and listen to the Avengers comic strip adaptations. I know Legion has listened yeah, to at least one. Or I have two listened of them, to a couple, and they they are quite good. You know, they're they're again nostalgic, quite campy, but you know, very sort of Scooby Doo. But mm-hmm. they're just fun, you know. Yeah, so. and then I I never listened to Terror the Master when it was released in Masterful, but uh, oh, I did. I think, I, yeah, I think you. I don't. I don't think you listened to Masterful. I, I, if I recall, I think you listened to Terror of the Master. If memory serves me right, I did, I did, yeah. and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I remember reviewing it. <laughs> yeah, and then we have UFO Breaking Point, which I wanted I to, listen to listen to, but I'm still not done with. I'm still not done with the the UFO Destruct Positive. Destruct positive. So yeah. I, I am into that one. I just yeah didn't have enough time. Mm-hmm. So with that, we are going to start off with the 8th of March, Strange Chemistry, which features two stories. We have this. A Ghost of Alchemy by Louise Jameson, which is a four-part story, and then The Fairies at the Bottom of the Garden by Carissa Hamilton Bannis, which is a one-part story. Yeah. I guess you've listened to both of you, have you Brett, of these. I've listened. I, 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 after the first eighth of March, I was like, I'm. I, I, it's not that. I just don't believe. And this, my rationale is because DC Comics and and Marvel Comics does this. They do these. You know, they do the eighth of March type stuff. They do. You know, Pride Month. They do this, this, and their stories that just are stories. Nothing is added to any. Like, you know, character, like if anything, what they do is they use it as a means to add new characters into the multiverse or whatever to make people want to buy them. But there's no character development there. Nobody's life is really that endangered. It's just more of a celebration. And and yeah. because of the first eighth of March, I'm like, eh. My time could be spent uh, watching grass grow instead. So you've not done the. the I've not done the eighth of March. Nope. Um, 
it wasn't a bad box set. The first story, obviously, better because it's longer, had more time to breathe. Mm. It was nice that it was it was basically a pure historical. There was no alien threat or anything. And I really liked Marie Curie's was it aid or companion, you know. Pe- Penelope? Is Man- that, uh... Matty, yeah. Matty Maloney. Okay. I don't know if she, I'm guessing she was a real person. I don't know wh- who, who, what she was to her. But, um, yeah, like, again, I, I'd like it if the Doctor could come back and grab her as a companion because she was capable... You know, you could see her sort of because of the Doctor's influence sort of changing and 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 all that and kind of gaining a bit more of her independence. But she hold she held, you know she held her own anyway. So I really like her. Uh, yeah, and I'd like to see if they could you know get her back or whatever. Even if if not, Marie Curie isn't around. Just to have her for a few adventures, it'd be nice. Eliza Warren though was sort of made out to be a bit of an idiot. Was that? Was that true? Was he kind of a bit ruled by um, the first lady? What's her face? Florence. Was was he kind of under her thumb? Um, I what President Harding? Is that what you're talking mm. about? Warren, first lady Eliza Warren, Florence Harding. Uh, yeah. I, why, why, I, I don't why know who he, Eliza Warren is. She, I, War, Warren, Warren. He, they, all they... I have is First Lady Florence Harding, and I have President Harding. That's all I, ha- I have. I don't have a. Oh, I don't okay. Have well, he she calls him Warren for some reason. Oh, okay. Eliza Warren, or just Warren. So I don't know what Warren was. Whether Warren was a nickname. I guess it must be. Hmm. But okay, Harding. Yeah, was Harding a bit of an idiot historically? No or... clue. He was uh, no. didn't listen okay. to it. Didn't know any. He was. Uh, he was there. No, it no, no. I, no, like I, he... I meant, I meant for, I, I meant yeah, I, it, from an actual historical standpoint, like because obviously you've done American history and whatever. Like, w- was he considered to be, you know, a bit of an idiot or a bit, you know, under her thumb or, or what? Like, as a, I mean, I've not studied American history, so I've got no idea about Harding at all. I'm just going off the Doctor Who story. Hmm. Never really heard of him. It looks like. He he's generally in the president's era that at least when we do American history we skip over because nothing really of importance is done between 1921 and 1923, so oh, I don't okay. know who he is. You know he's pre, you know the whole Great Depression type stuff. So not a clue. Okay, fair enough then. But yeah, uh, so not a bad story. Quite well written, because I know some of the stuff that Wee Jameson has written wasn't great, but no, this this wasn't a bad story. And I don't get people's complaints about Tom Baker sounding old. You know, the guy is 89 years old, for Christ's sake, mm-hmm. at this point. Like, what do you want? You know, give the guy some slack. You know, he's still acting. Would you prefer he wasn't? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I totally mm. would prefer him to continue to be acting, in my opinion. Because, and I know that this one has been recorded more recently than the. Uh, uh, let's see, I'm just kind of curious about the recording, but let's see. So this was recorded on between uh, last year around March 1st and the 25th, 26th of last March, March. So that's when that was recorded. I'm just kind of curious to see when the uh, 12th Doctor one was recorded because I'm pretty sure I, I uh, so that one so that was recorded in 2018, which uh, mm. so I have not listened to that, but you know, obviously he sounds a whole lot better in the New Frontiers box set because that was recorded six years ago compared to the 8th of March, which was last year. But again, I would prefer him recording something rather than him not recording something and we get John Coleshaw because we have, you know, the rest of like John Coleshaw's life to probably have him portray the fourth doctor. We have limited time left of Tom Baker being able to play the fourth, the, the fourth doctor. So the more the mm. merrier, in my opinion. 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, use them while they're you know while they're alive. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you know that goes for every everyone. Susan, mm-hmm. Polly, you know, come on. Yeah. You know, get them, get them while they're hot. You know. Yeah. So, uh, Humphrey, you said that you only you started listening to the eighth of March. What did, what were your thoughts of what you listened to? I got about halfway through the first story. I actually really quite liked it. I thought it was really good. I'm looking forward to finishing it actually because, again, it's a nice historical story. It's a, you know, Marie Curie is a scientist I've always found interesting. So I I liked it. I thought it was really good. And I hmm. personally don't see what people are complaining about regarding Tom Baker, to be quite honest. But there we go. So just out of curiosity, what would you both of you rate the first story? Because I do have a question for Liam about the second story. Thus far, probably about a 7.5? I'd say 6.5 out of 10. 6.5? You know, yeah, it's just not a bad story. Okay. So the second story is called The Fairies at the Bottom of the Garden, and... Here is, I'm going to read the first sentence of the synopsis and then the first sentence of the second paragraph in the synopsis and Uh ask about the whole thing. So Uh first sentence in the synopsis, young Amelia Pond is used to getting into trouble. Okay. Second sentence the first sentence in the next paragraph is because Missy is also in trouble. So this is a Amelia Pond and Missy story. Mm-hmm. Yep. Wow. I'm suddenly kind of intrigued. Uh, what? Tell me a little bit more about this because I might actually have to listen to this last story. Well, it's basically it's teenager Amelia. Again, I must admit, really good actress. Uh, it's the same person who played her as young Amelia in um, in the Doctor Who stuff. So they, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Karen Gillan's cousin. I can't remember her name. Katie Blackwood, is it or Kate Blackwood? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah I like her she's she's a good actor she can act um you know she does audio quite well the story is a little bit strange uh the first sort of quarter is like okay what's actually going on but it's about her stuff with you know going to therapy and all that and uh you know, Missy takes the place of the therapist um which is quite funny and she is stuck on earth due to a faulty vortex manipulator so she's trying to get off earth and tries to convince amy to join her as a companion because she's like well why are you hanging around for the raggedy man he's not going to come for you i'm better than him you know come join me she refuses um and these fairies have like come from the crack in her wall and you think they're evil but they they just want to be. They just want. To, they just want to. Ha- they just want to have a safe place to um, to go, uh, and you know, end up protecting Amy from uh, from Missy. Uh, so yeah, not a bad story. Um, hmm. Fills in a little bit of her teenage life, um, and explains you know, a bit more about why she was, you know, had to go to therapy and stuff, you know, from in, it was mentioned obviously in the 11th hour. Um, and, uh, nice to see the, the crack in her wall gets mentioned again. Hmm. <clears throat> that is good. So, um, do you think it suffers because it's a one part, or do you think they could have developed it into a, a, a longer part of yeah, the story? Yeah, I think what... I think I think it could have been a bit longer, maybe a two parter. <clears throat> but um, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I'm gonna I might have to give that one a listen because that's. That intrigues me. However, the interesting mm. thing about here's a 
I guess here's another just a quick annoyance about everything. So mm. as I look at the pricing of the Fifth Doctor Adventures box set, it is the download price is for me is $21.13. Okay. Which is there's two six part or two three parters, so six total parts in the story. You have the eighth of March, Strange Chemistry. You have five parts, same exact price. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like maybe it's just be me being kind of a little nitpicky, but shouldn't the same amount of time period costs the same amount of money compared to, or a different amount of money compared to something else. I don't know. I, I'm just well, being I a mean, again, nit- nitpicky. But 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 look at the look at the second half of series twelve of the fourth Doctor Adventures. Look at how many stories and parts is there. And then that is the true. Price. And I'd be interested to see what mm-hmm. the, what the time is for that actually. Like, what's the overall mm-hmm. length of that box set for the the third uh, the fourth Doctor? The, yeah, series twelve, part two, Angels and Demons. I I can I will pull that up right now because that's technically so, ten parts, you know. So yeah, which I think because I I bought it like way 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 pre before yeah. I could. So that's yeah. you know the price is twenty four eighty six, and the the runtime for it is three hundred minutes. But I'm not sure if they're counting any of the backstage, behind the scene type no. stuff. So no. if if they are, that's a pretty good deal. If mm. if there's eight parts and it's only like three dollars more, but uh, yeah, it's ten. It's that's ten um, parts. Yeah. Oh, or ten parts. That's even better. However, hopefully, yeah. it's not like one of those like throw-in stories that they did with the last, you know, that one fourth Doctor story, which the. Uh, I, I I wish they just would have like not thrown that in and or if mm. they did if I had the option, it could have been cheaper for me to pass on. So Yeah. Um, well, we'll see. Yeah. yeah. It seems like that story might be the last Margaret story, but I don't know. I guess we'll find out. All right. Way to go. Now to transition from the eighth of March to the fourth doctor and Margaret. And we have two Ugh. stories with this one. We have the Ice Heist by Guy Adams, which is four part, and the Attila the Loss, Antilla the Loss by Phil Mulryan. Antilia. And, yeah, Antilia. Sorry. Um, I'm going to start off with Humphrey because I, I, I want Humphrey to say something because I know he's going to say something nice. So, Humphrey, what are your thoughts about Ice Heist by Guy Adams? <sighs> it wasn't bad, but it. It, I think the best description I could give for this story was is vanilla. It's <laughs> not bad, but it's not outstanding either. It's, you know, a perfectly agreeable couple of hours listening. You know, I'm, I certainly am not sorry that I listened to it, but there are plenty of stories I've enjoyed more, but equally plenty I've enjoyed far less. So it's a very middle of the road run of the mill release you know not bad but not brilliant very yeah vanilla i think is the hmm. can i just say wrong. i love can yeah. i just say you have opinions however they're wrong <laughs> anyway continue uh oh okay yeah, so the most after you inspiring listen okay all right liam like go oh, just one second i let me just I like I'm gonna rile Liam up a little bit. Okay. There <sighs> Liam, right there in the distance. There's ice warriors. Do you see them? All right, are you ready? Ready? Go get them. All right. So uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I just this Okay. This story. Just one I, 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 I I'm I'm gonna do a Liam impression. All right. Just one second. Let me see if I can do uh, uh let me oh, get no. let me work on my like uh English accent. My like my my very good passable English accent. So let's just see. Let me channel my inner Hugh Grant. Let's see. Um, excuse me, but I think that the Ice Warriors have been way too used way too much in that in a good way. I wish that we would have see a little bit more of their culture. 
rather than them just doing the same thing over and over again. It's really quite dull. There, there's, there's my... <laughs> you make me sound like a really bad freezer from Dragon Ball Z, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, what was that? <laughs> uh, talk about Saturday Night Tea Time villain, anyone? <laughs> All right. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna work uh, on Humphrey, my my impersonation of Humphrey, real soon. So, just <laughs> uh, 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 I'm eagerly, eagerly looking forward to see that one. Um, <laughs> for me, for me, this story was j- just oh god, it was so boring. Um, it's. I was talking to Legion about this yesterday, and as he was saying, it is your typical second Doctor story with the fourth Doctor, hmm. and the Ice Warriors are just the same old Ice Warriors. You know, you have. A female ice warrior who has slightly more interesting motivations than um, the male bunch of ice warriors, but she gets killed halfway through. Um, and just, it was, and again, uh, you know, bleep this if you want, but just please. Fuck off, Briggs. Can we just have <laughs> Briggs not playing every single bloody minor character under under the sun, as well as the Ice Warriors? Oh yeah, when when uh, he was the the vicar at the very uh, beginning, I was just like, yeah, no, please yeah. no. Well, yeah. and it, I don't know if you listened to the the cast and crew commentary or whatever. <laughs> But no. he's also the di- di- director, and there's a thing, and I was going to try to pull it before the podcast, but I is. just didn't have time. And he's sitting there, he, he's getting, re- he's doing this one part where he's interacting with, I can't remember who, I think it was the Ice Warrior, the female Ice Warrior. And mm. uh, it, yeah, it's it's the scene where she's basically berating him, and he's being, you know, this passive vicar or whatever and then he goes cut and he just goes well i think that's all right i think i think i did a good job yeah i'm not gonna do it again and it's just like uh, i no you you cannot you maybe you think more highly of yourself than maybe somebody else does but i don't feel as though you can say action start doing the acting and then cut and be like i think i did a good job and then just kind of like let's move yeah. on to the next scene. Like I, I feel that, as that's though that's not a director role. You, you... what? No. I mean, I it wasn't I bad, but I mean, I, I mean, it wasn't. You know, he didn't do a bad job, but it just him being the vicar was like the first thing that kind of like threw me from the story. Was like yep. again. I was like, oh, really? Can we not? Can we can we just get somebody else, please? Like yeah. we know Nick Briggs is in this, but in this because he's doing the bloody Ice Warriors. Because of course he is. Can we? Uh, anyway, so that annoyed me. And then you get don't even get me started on bloody Margaret as a character. Mm, I, I have some thoughts. You, 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 I have thoughts on Margaret because I'll tell you. Her character she annoys became me. like She's... a 180 from Ice Heist to the second story. Like yeah. she she went from and, and, and here's what I'm gonna say. She went from I could have I, I can't remember who the uh what the actress's name is. You, you guys will be able to fill me in the instant I say it, but uh no no just one second no no i haven't said the thing yet so you can't fill me in so uh, good job at trying to read my mind however i felt as though the way she was written in ice heist you could have subbed out her and put anya kingdom in her place and it would have been the same character 
Yeah, I can see what you mean, actually. Or even, and then, or even, even Hebe from Waterworlds. And then, oh no, yeah. Hebe would like be lecturing everybody. And then, um, she, what was she then doing? The, oh, wait. and then the well, the, the the second story, second story, she was just basically wallpaper. She just like traveling wallpaper. She just happened to be there from time to time, just to be, mm. to you know, to do like the whole, you know. You know, Scooby Doo gang break up and go searching thing. I mean, to me, that the only reason why she was actually part of the second story is we also needed to we needed to break the doctor up from his uh, his TARDIS team, but he also Leela needed to be broken up from her so that she could do something else also. So I feel as though her mm. character she was just like well-placed traveled wallpaper that just happened to be there so that she could witness things so that we could get stuff related to her character really wasn't that important. I granted her, her character kind of saved the day sort of because of, you know, she was talking to those people that morphed into some things and they decided not to, to be helpful because she said stuff, but that could have been anybody, anybody the else. Thing the thing that bothered me about Margaret's character in, especially in the first story was it was, she was mopey and bitchy because she'd been left behind. The doctor had buggered off and left her. Right. Yes. yes. Then he comes back, grabs her, takes her to obviously the, the sort of art exhibition thing of where she's, you know, doing or, you know, had art of her. And then can't mm -hmm. handle it because it's, oh, well, you've just showed me my grave or I'm going to die. Yeah, Margaret, newsflash, everybody's going to die, not just and you. You're, you're 300 like, years yeah. in the future. It's just like, wait. What do you expect? Like, did, did she think she was immortal? Was there a chance yeah. that she was immortal? It's, like, if, if you like, were to take me old, to... How old is yeah. she at this point? What, 50, 60? So... What did you expect, love? Yeah, exactly. And no. oh, and it was, and it, again, what bothered me about her character? Her character in the first story was literally, oh, um, snap, snap, snap at the various persons or people. You know, she's, you know, she throws a, a tizzy, and then someone goes, oh no, but let's do this. Oh, okay, and then snap again, well, yeah. and then. So you snap and then you and then and then you know you bitch and then you go yeah but Margaret we we need to go we 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 need to leave oh yeah sure all right and, and, uh, well no just, and then the best yeah. character from her first appearance was the chick that ended up turning into yeah. the witch like that yeah, exactly. should have been she the was companion way more interesting and a way cooler character and a way more likable yeah. character mm hmm. I, Oh, so yeah, just just a really dull story. Um, I, so I, I thought personally, and uh, don't know. Yeah. So I'm gonna surprise you guys. I I actually thought that the Ice Heist was actually a very good story. I felt as though it, it you know, granted, Margaret is not a good character. However, what I thought of when when it first started off and you had these you know these things that were supposed to have been created by this you know artist that you know thinks highly of himself you know is supposed to be probably what the original inhabitants of the planet looked like you knew that something was off with the whole thing which i did appreciate you did have and the, the, to me beside minus margaret the worst part about the ice heist was the female ice warrior because Leela said there's something off about her and I was waiting for the whole you know don't judge a book by its color cover Leela she's actually not that bad of a person you, you know cut her some slack and and you know Leela is just like no she's an ice warrior and she goes that's actually racist to call me an ice warrior I am not an ice warrior. What do you think we all like murder people? And then the next thing she murders somebody and goes, oh, hey, by the way, here's my colleagues. They're here to murder you all. And it's just like, wait, we just got lectured by somebody who was saying, mm. don't you, you lump us all together. And then, 
oh, by the way, you I am indeed. one of those people. Yeah. To yeah. me, yeah. that was that that was Again, the worst part yeah. about that. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that also bothered me. And I was like, well, well, who wrote this story? Like Guy Adams. And uh Which is unusual because Guy Adams is usually really good. Mm-hmm. Mm. But I, I, I'll uh, tell you the I, the, the thing yeah. I liked about the ice heist, and I kind of wish they would not have killed off these ice warriors, because I feel as though that they could have done so much more with them, because I like the idea that these ice warriors are like not associated with the ice warriors that we've known throughout all of Doctor Who. These ice warriors, you know, they're not tr- fighting for survival. They have like like all of their hope for their future like you know they're 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 all of their people their comrades or whatever have been like eat, they're gone and so these are desperate ice warriors and i feel as though that's what i really liked about them because that i i feel as though you have you know, like what was it one of the earlier episodes of the new series the, the dalek you have that one dalek and it's just desperate to survive and I think that's what works about that story. And I like that these are, you know, a lone ranger type of a ice warriors clan that are just desperate to survive. You know, they're they're basically doing a bank job because, you know, they have no honor because all they're trying to do is just live another day and perhaps get enough money to, you know, maybe colonize or something like that. I like the idea of them basically... Like, this is their last hope. And then, of course, they get killed off at the very end because they do, like, mm. standard prototypical ice warrior warring thing. Stuff. And I'm, yeah. yeah and it's yeah. just like, like I, I feel as though Guy Adams had a chance of really making a good story and maybe have prolonged, like, you know, I, I would love to, you know, maybe voiced by not Nick Briggs, but I would have loved to have seen further ice warriors that, you know, were desperate. Another run in with desperate ice warriors, because I feel as though that there could be something unstandard ice warrior thing to happen. But then, you know, he goes and falls and does the whole, you know, oh, look, there's a spaceship here and uh, well, I'm going to attack it. And and then the doctor's just like, oh, that's an unmanned spaceship and uh, that the spaceship's going to kill the ice warriors. So uh, that's going to happen. Anyway, yeah. So yeah, I uh, I don't think it's that bad of a story. I would give it a seven point five. It could have been better. I think that I, I it was a lot better. It's a lot better than most of the Ice Warrior stories that Big Finish has done, in my opinion. Yeah, it it, it could have been good if certain elements had been changed about it. Um, as you as you say. But for me, four. Mm. Uh, yeah, just, just um, six point five for me. Six point five. Wow, that's that's a Liam two right there uh, from Humphrey. <laughs> Woo! Ow. All right. Uh, the ne- the last story. I'm gonna get it wrong again. Antilla. Is that what it is? Antilia. Antilia. Antilia the Lost, which is. Basically, one once it started off, I'm like, oh, so this is a Lost City of Atlantis type thing, which I was kind of okay with. And then the further and further we got into the story, I feel as though I've heard a story very similar to this, not just once, but multiple, multiple times. And I just... I. <sighs> I didn't really care for it. And then one of the things that really bothered me is one of the cast or one of the the crew, this, uh, is it Dr. Vance or something like that? He built this ship to find like this lost city of Atlantis. And he, in order to save basically all of humanity, all non-humanity or whatever, to save the universe... He needed to blow up this ship, and it was almost like he had to choose to sacrifice, like, his family. Like, oh, I don't know if I can't... Like, you don't know how hard it was to me for me to build this thing. It's just like, oh, okay. So all of humanity screwed because it took you a long time to build that ship. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, 
I'm going to say one sentence. Uh, what happened again? Like it, it's so forgettable. I, I, I yes, I agree. I, I can't it's really awful. remember much about it. It was yeah, as well, you're saying about the ship and I, had the whole Atlantis I, I, thing. I, I I listened to this three hours ago, so you're in luck. I just barely listened to this. So the the <laughs> doc this uh, the ship the blade was trying to find this like you know lost city of Atlantis that disappeared. And then it pulls in the TARDIS, obviously. Leela lands there. They kind of work together to uh, f try to scout out this whole thing where you find that this planet is kind of a false planet. Everything is unnatural. It is human-made. You know, Even the fake sun is obviously a fake sun. The trees are not real or whatever. And then you meet these like mutated creatures that one minute they were all human pe beings, oh. maybe even scientists. And then the other minute yeah. they were all absorbed into one essence. And then the next minute they were mutated creatures. And then you have the main mad scientist who basically is reckless, which is kind of like, you know, I, I swear that's, that's how humanity is going to die. Some scientist who thinks he's smarter than everybody else is going to do an experiment yep. and it's going to destroy everything. He basically, See, and that's yeah. basically my thing. Don't become a scientist because you're inevitably going to go. You can, you know, you're going to go nuts. So, uh huh. And then he gets merged by some <sighs> parasite that needs positive energy to to feed on, and so the 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 parasite is trying to get into our universe so it can multiply and feed on the positive energy in our universe. And then you have like again. Leela is separated. She's doing her thing. Margaret is just, you know, fancy wallpaper going from here to here. And then the doctor is doing the doctor type of a thing, confronting the mad scientist, basically outsmarting him. And then, of course, you have Leela and Margaret eventually. For some reason, they knew to basically hook up the the, these electrodes to the plane before the doctor said you need to do this because we might need to destroy the plane. So they were already preemptively ready to destroy the plane. And then the doctor's like, we need to destroy the plane. That's the only way that they're going to get out. And they're like, oh, hey, by the way, we've all set this up. All we need to do is create like a, 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 a geo storm in this fake world. And then the electricity will hit this and it will blow up the ship, killing the mad scientist. And it's just like, th there's a lot of like too many odd things that occurred and yeah. the, I will tell you one thing that really bothered me. So mad scientist is merged with a parasite and he needs, you know, positive energy to feed on. So, and, and he fed on it, one human being. He sends, he, he's in c total control of all of these like robot droids. And one of the people that was with Leela, the robot droid basically just, euthanizes her in front of everybody and it's just like <laughs> well wait and then and then you find out uh, like you know the next section later that he will can absorb like he could just put his hands on people and just suck all their positive energy which you know basically ages them at a rapid speed and goes into him feeding him it's like well wait he killed a person that he could have actually used for food like there's a couple of things that occurred that I'm like, I don't think this was well thought out. Like it no. just, yeah. and granted I I've been recently watching the YouTube channel, Star Trek, Nick pickers, which basically nitpicks like minor details and just, and I'm like, and then I, and now I'm th sitting there like thinking about like all the nitpicks that I'm doing with these things. I'm like, did that rub off on me or am I, oh, have I always been like this? And I'm like, no, I'm a science fiction <laughs> nerd. I've, I've always been like this. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And nah, I, I, I didn't rate this story really. I, well, like, no, I can't really I, give it a rating because I just, it was just dull. Just this whole box set was it just was dull. It was boring. Oh God, that's a God awful story. Yeah. Let's see. Just one second. What would you rate it? Five. No, I, I, agree, I agree with Hump. Ah, look at that. <laughs> um, I would rate it. Yeah, I, I'd go a six. It's I, I've heard worse, and 
it's uh, like it's one of those things where if I could, could I re-listen to it? Yes. Would I want to with, you know, jump to it? No. But I wouldn't be kicking and screaming while I was listening to it. So uh, that's what I would do. Mm. Fair enough. All right. Well, I guess with that, we are... Oh, Before we actually get done with this podcast, we are going to do a slight change to one of our Happiness Patrol and um, that being Liam, Liam's happiness is no longer his favorite Doctor Who episode. He's found another uh, happiness, which is not his favorite Doctor Who episode. So, Liam, what is the change to your happiness for the Happiness Patrol podcast? The change, I, I thought we'd uh, we'd been talking about a tomb rather a lot. And I was like, you know what? It, it It's on most fans, you know, lists. And it, it is a great story. Um, but I was like, well, let's just change it up a bit because I'm sure people have you know, spoke about Tomb and heard about Tomb until the cows come home. So I thought, well, let's go for another Troughton story that, again, is really good in my opinion and uh, I've got a lot of respect for and time for, and that's the invasion. So, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So we're going to watch the in- er, invasion as part of Liam's happiness patrol, which I, I will tell you, I thoroughly enjoyed. I... I was wondering where you were going to go because I was like, there's only because you hinted at in our chat that is going to be a Cyberman story. And so I'm like, oh, man, I hope it's not an eight parter. So I messaged. I'm like, so what is it going to be if it's an eight parter? You're I, I let me know so I can do this. And your, your immediate is like, no, no, no. I was just thinking about just doing a different story like invasion. And so I'm like, yeah, so an eight parter. Uh, Uh. all right well with that the next episode will be the happiness patrol the whatever ninth doctor one that you did and the invasion so stay tuned for that is that is that next week we're doing that yep Um, i believe so the the might have to postpone it for the week. You have been listening to the Doctor Who Alhambra podcast. Doctor Who is owned and trademarked by the BBC. Doctor Who Alhambra is not affiliated with the BBC or Big Finish. No infringement is intended. Visit our website at alhambrapodcast.weebly.com or email the show at alhambraaudio at gmail.com. Tweet us at Alhambra Podcast. That is A L H A M B R A Podcast. Thank you. Liam and I have been watching the Sarah Jane Adventures. Oh, is it nice getting back into to that? They're really good, actually. They're so well done. I've not watched them before, so... Oh, I think they're way, way better than Torchwood. Yeah, I I agree. I, I think the only season of Torchwood I actually liked was the Children of Earth, and, you know, that, that was, uh, you know, n- not a, a hopeful series, but at least it... I felt as though was engaging and not constantly like loss of hope. Like, cause exactly. And, and, cause that's what I just feel as though Torchwood is constantly is just loss of hope and just how bad is the loss of hope going to end up being? Yeah. No, I agree. Well, it'd be interesting to, I'm curious what uh, Liam has listened to for the month because uh, I only got one release uh, listened to for the month of March. To be honest, we've all, Legion, Liam and I, have all been having a bit of big finish burnout, so we haven't listened to much at all. I mean, the good news is is not that many of us have... uh, um, 
there wasn't that many releases to go over because we had, you know, the fourth no. doctor release. We had the eighth of March release, the terror of the master, which was a re-release of something that came out during the masterful box set, the UFO, which I was going to listen to, but life got busy and so <laughs> I couldn't the Avengers comic strip, which, you know, I haven't really listened to a single one of those. And then we have the Torchwood uh, thing. And, I, you know, you, I know you and me are out on Torchwood. And so mm. the only other thing we have is the uh, Iris Wild Time. And I do not like Iris Wild Time. So uh, th- there's not that much to talk about. No, I've only really... I started the 8th of March, but I... There we go. There we are.